Hello, friends. Best greetings from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Fursov. I'm a research entomologist, beekeeper, and teacher, and you are visiting my channel on YouTube. Welcome. Welcome to my channel to watch different videos about entomology, science about insects. And today's video, today's translation is devoted to insects which are living in different countries about their conditions of their life and the conditions of life people in these countries and the situation. What is the country, what country is the best for insects? So this is a question, probably how Hamlet in Shakespeare, Shakespeare novels asked to be or not to be? What's about insect? Insect or insects? Do they survive in this global world? World of challenges, world of wars, world of conflicts, and world of destruction, where no conservation for nature or very little still conservation in different countries. And what country is better for conservation of insects? What country is better for studying insects? And how we can determine it, how we can identify it? What country is better for research of insects? And of course, insects were connected with global economy, were connected with human beings, with their activities. We can say, what is the place the best for people to live? This is a question. What is the best place to live for insects? This is a question. First of all, we could say the best place from human point of view. This is the place where there is a law. There is an acting law of government, acting law between people. So this law will be distributed for all activities of humans, including activities of humans directed to their economical activities in agriculture, in forestry, in all types of activities. Because it's connected with insects as well, because insects were spread all around the human beings, all around their houses, around the agricultural places in forestry. And we are interconnected with them. If there is a law in the country, so there is an opportunity and possibility for human beings to live and not to suffer and for insects and animals not to survive, but to live prosperously and spread in the nature. So if you can take the map, I have the map. Very old one, very old one from 1960s. Many countries appeared, many countries changed, but still nature is disappearing in many countries. Very difficult to say about nature without humans, because humans, they're everywhere now, everywhere, even in some distant areas where they have not been for ages, for hundreds of years. Now they are there. They're not only some cannibals somewhere in Papua New Guinea, but there are some businessmen who are making business in Papua New Guinea. And insects and animals suffering very much, even in these distant areas. And the same about tropical areas in South America, in some distant areas where aborigines of South America are still living, but they're already suffering because human beings are coming and business activity, activities of different forestry companies, global companies are coming, which are coming for forest, for natural resources, for gas, oil, everything from the nature. And insects, they're just disappearing by dozens, by hundreds, every day, one, two, three, ten species of insects and other animals disappearing. Of course, there are some countries which are highly involved in the study of insects, in outreach of different act human activities, where you can go to a shop and buy very nice books about for education 
where you can see some butterflies with some descriptions. So you don't need to catch butterflies. You can study them initially in winter time, like on this British Michael Busy Pocket Guide of Butterflies. Yeah, to be careful about insects, to study where they are living, what larvae, where, where larvae are feeding on, where you can find them, where, where, what where about their biology. And it's really nice. Or you can go to Dutch shop to buy the same guide, but in Dutch language, for instance. Again, with photographs and nice drawings of butterflies. And it's a great step for conservation of nature. A great step for conservation of butterflies, beetles, dragonflies. Different catetids, different grasshoppers, all insects around us, even for conservation of cockroaches. We will see today cockroaches good one as well or you can go to a slovakian shop and you get nice photos of insects with some descriptions so these outreach activities are very important for conservation of insects and other animals because here just young generation pupils of colleges even from kindergarten young boys and girls can study insects from the book initially and then can go to the nature take some photos on iNatural on iNaturalist and upload them even for this apollo which is has disappeared in many areas but still in a book but you can take a photo and upload it on internet to facebook to instagram to TikTok. To YouTube channel like we are just translating now for not for TikTok but for YouTube channel. Some people are suggesting new suggestions coming that South American Costa Rica region is the best region for conservation of insects and for the life of insects. Well, good idea. And I agree with this suggestion as well. Let's start to show some slides and discuss it. For instance, we cannot avoid collections of insects. Some insects have been collected for ages, for hundreds of years, and were stored in museums like these lovely stick insects in Japanese museum, by the way. They have a very big size, they're very funny, very unusual, very surprising. And when you can see them in the nature, you will be very surprised. But some of them were in the culture. They're like pets in cultures of different home owners. So you can buy like in a zoo shop them for study, for keeping them. And this is a part Wait a minute. This is a part of pictures from Ishikawa Insect Museum. Why I started from Japan? Because in Japan, all insects are valued. This is in the na nature of Japanese culture to take care about people, to take care about nature, to take care about insects as well. So some people are breeding insects in the culture like this, stag beetles, so you can find these lovely stag beetles in zoo shops and to keep them in hands this is a beautiful situation this is a dream for many young children so we can buy either living specimen or just model model of insects and it's also very funny because 
at least model plastic bark can live for longer time rather than very fragile beetle. So, right, arena beetles, stag beetles, this is the Japanese arena beetle, and these are larvae of them, and this is great Hercules beetle with a huge, huge horn on the top. So you say this is a stick beetle. Oh, in Japan, so many different cicadas, so many, not only abura zemi, but different type of zemi, different type of leaf hoppers, especially of big size. And they are widely distributed in Southeast Asia, and in Southeast Asia, many species of them. And these are stag beetles with different horns and different mandibles and with pretty big size. And they're in the museum for the study, for education, for exposition, for conservation of these specimens, which can be used for identification species and, of course, for education. All these beetles, these are lovely beetles from South America. They're under protection now, but we have been collected dozens years ago, so they're now in museum for exposition. All these morpho beetles, morpho butterflies, you saw so shiny, blue-colored butterflies. They're not so colored when we have closed wings, but if they closed wings, they're just making mimicry with leaves. Otherwise, we are just attracting to between attraction between different species and between different sexes. So that's why we are shiny and to, to attract one species to another, one specimen, female attracting male. And for another males, we are just showing that this is their territory. So territorial activities. So morpho butterflies are really beautiful in South America. But the nature places, natural environment is under the danger, great danger. Oh, yes, these are mantids on the left side, praying mantis, and huge size Asian hornets, which are widely distributed in Southeast Asia, in Japan as well. So they have important role as the predators, because they're predators of different pests and different caterpillars, beetles, grasshoppers in the nature. But of course, if I live in somewhere near the farms, near the houses, we may have some danger from activities of humans. And of course, when we are coming to another areas as invasive species, we are becoming very dangerous invasive species like Asian hornet, small Asian hornet. Vespa Velutina came to Europe or just some records of Vespa mandarina in, in North America, in United States, have been recorded during the last years. So invasion of invasive species is a very dangerous situation in the nature because they can be spread in new areas and make a huge damage for human activities. Well, and now we can enjoy these insects in hands. The Japanese like very much stag beetles to, to observe them in the nature, to search for them in the evening time somewhere in the forest. This is kind of a hobby for many young people and also pretty old people, for hobbyists, for hobby entomologists, not for only for professionals. There are many hobbyists. Many people who like to make collections of stag beetles and to make some competition between hobbyists. How big is this insect? How big is this beetle? What about the mandibles? The bigger is more valuable, the bigger is costly, or cost or price of beetles can be very high as well. And this is an excursion travel to local forest or even to special forestry area in evening time to search for female, small one, or big one, the male, or stag beetle. Maybe not only for collection, but also for fun, 
for entertainment and for taking photographs. But in some countries also you can buy some insects in a zoo shop, like this, these silk moths. It's possible in Japan or in other countries as well to have cultures of insects, cultures of caterpillars, and to receive some big butterflies and moths. Like if you keep here the culture of these silk moths, which will have been bought from commercial company in Japan, it's possible to breed them and to receive beautiful silk moths, like this very funny silk moth. These are pictures from some Japanese sites. And I really appreciate a great job to show some activities in entomology, in entomological study and entomological collecting and entomological observations of insects. Japanese young boys and researchers, very observative, very careful, very interested to take some photographs, to take some videos and to publish results for scientists in scientific journals. No small observation will be missed. Some observations, some scientific papers also published in probably more than 10 entomological journals in Japan. So these are silk moths on their cocoons. And in some, in many cases, to understand the importance of entomology and the importance of nature conservation. For that, entomologists and zoologists were taking some expeditions, some travels to distant areas from home. We go to some places with a forest, with desert, with some mountains, lakes, rivers, grasses, lands to study insects, not only in the urban areas, somewhere in a botanical garden, in a natural park, in a city, but to visit unique places, to visit unique natural environments, in some cases untouched, and where these untouched areas you know, with natural environment, in many cases, were still conserved in some distant countries, which are really like a paradise for insects, paradise for human beings, paradise for citizens of this country, if they do appreciate it, or usually people are taking it for granted and thinking the citizen of this country, they are, and it should be like that. We don't think about another country, like some distant countries. I'm translating this video from Ukraine. Ukraine is located in Europe, Ukraine is in a hard situation now. Don't forget if you are in a distant country which is far away from Ukraine, Ukraine is fighting for freedom. Ukraine is fighting for democracy and Ukraine fighting against Israel. Support Ukraine, support, yes, stand with Ukraine. And Ukrainian scientists can visit some other distant areas, some other countries and museums for investigations of insects for study entomology. Yes, some people are taking attention to us as a visitors and writing some questions about Vespa mandarina. Yes, in some cases, Vespa mandarina, giant Asian hornets trying to spread in some distant areas from the natural environment, like in the United States. It's suggested that by authorities in America, that population of Vespa mandarina have been eradicated during the last couple of years. But in other pest, in other invasive species, Vespa velutina also have been recorded in a state of Georgia, in Georgia, in the United States. So some unpleasant global trade is spreading not only goods, not only different food, weapons, drugs, but also some invasive dangerous pests like dangerous insects. So because species of insects, if they're coming from distant area to another distant area where they have no natural, natural control enemies, 
where we are not controlled by enemies like insects like uh, animals so we can be multiplicated very quickly so like africanized race of honeybees have been spread this population their population have been spread in south america and spread and moved from south america to the north america through mexico to even to the states of texas and no north so that's another species of asian insects if i come into another areas uncontrolled without quarantine or with just occasionally oh, we don't know why you are coming we can suggest they are coming because of uncontrolled trade but difficult to say probably like that we need to control them and we can find paradise in new areas yes but what's about expedition what about the best country for insects where you are watching this road road for paradise road for paradise of insects and paradise is located in tropical area and semi-tropical area where scientists entomologists suggestion suggesting that the biodiversity of insects and animals are is higher rather in comparison with another temperate regions because of natural conditions natural weather and environment and the biodiversity of plants higher in tropical areas and semi-tropical areas humidity is higher so conditions is much better for insects so the biodiversity is higher and let's watch this study using different traps like some entomologists using light traps like small one or big one so you can see light trap is lightning and insects are coming and to study insects you don't need to kill them you need you can come to with photo camera with video camera to make observations to take photographs to take videos and to observe this biodiversity and these insects have been taken on camera in where it was in australia australia is really paradise for insects some beetles some rhinoceros beetles some this is a female of rhino beetle are coming because of light and it's a great pleasure to take photo of beetle sitting on hand and this is a female without horn oh right and another very funny scarabate beetles and they're not shining they're yellowish and they're greenish they're yellowish like a gold gold beetles the whole scarab beetles and they're really like golden they're not golden they are they covers heating covers has a special coloration like gold shining golden coloration they're really beautiful sorry i cannot show it on telephone but i show it on computer so after this translation you can watch second version with photographs from with presentation on my web page of youtube because i'm doing two translation one through telephone for better translation for one part of audience and through computer for another part of audience with original photographs and different pictures and also video all right again so beautiful golden beetles scarab beetles yes they're feeding the flurry are living underground underground eating some roots eating some plants maybe sometimes under the bark of trees and by becoming so beautiful adults oh another golden beetle but a little bit greenish green beetle all right and then this are uh, coming arena beetle also australian species so beautiful one let's watch uh, this beetle closed on a close distance yes horns are so beautiful horns are can be absolutely different for different species and beetle is not very small pretty big one and what's about tropical species of bugs some bugs are flying very quickly this giant bug the size about 
I guess about up to 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters, I guess so. Because this is a giant bar, which is living in Southeast Asia, in Thailand and Malaysia, in Indonesia, and also this several species of these aquatic bugs living also in Australia. And this bug was coming just not on high, not on foot, but flying. All right, it was about some grasshoppers. And this funny grasshopper with a so long, long nose, this is a acrid. And acrid, not very small one, not green, but a gray color. And size is really pretty big, like a finger, size of finger. And what's about the grasshoppers and crickets? Some crickets like this white knee cricket, quite a big size. And of course, voracious, because this is a predator, has a very strong mandibles trying to bite entomologists. So you need to be patient to take a photo to escape from this biting. Or oh, another type of a grasshopper, and also catetid, spotted catetid. In tropical areas, in semi tropical areas, catetids were growing very fast, very big. Their size is quite big. So they're very colorful. They have a lot of adaptations of mimicry to be adapted to escape from predators. So they're pretty invisible. They're like dry leaves, like pieces of bark. So they adapted to be invisible in a jungle of forest. All this one, green like a leaf and not very small, quite a big one and producing also very lovely sounds. And some of these closed species of catetid, like this small hooded catetid, they're also stored in some zoo shops, in some cultures for conservation. I'm not quite sure with same species or closed species, but catetids I consider to be as very interesting species for cult, cult cultivation in a culture. And this is another species of acrid. It's again with a very special adaptation, with very interesting shape of a head, so like a sharpen, like a horn on the head. And this is a female with ovipositor. This is the same white knotted cricket, but on the ground. So you can recognize legs with very distinct white spots on knees, just between femora and tibia. And of course, in tropical, semi-tropical area, you can find not the stick, like this stick in hand, but stick insect, stick insects. And they're very funny. They're very unusual and quite large in size. Like you can see here, you can see, you can think of this is a sn snake, that is, this is a lizard. No, this is not a lizard. This is a huge size, more than 20 centimeters, centimeter stick insect of a gray color, again with adaptation, with mimicry, looks like a stick, it's gray colored, and also pretty invisible when sitting without movement somewhere on a stem of plants, somewhere on a bark of trees. A lot of leaf hoppers are living in the tropical areas. Their biodiversity is very high and they're, they're seen in different sounds. So they're very famous in Japan for sure. And in Southeast Asia, there are a lot of different species with different transparent green, ray, yellow color with different shape of body. Shape of body more or less the same, but coloration is different. Sound is different. Even if this, the, name, the sounds uh, is determining their names. Like in Japan, the one species the most common, aburazemi, in translation from Japanese, as I know, this is a boiling oil, boiling oil. Or in others, names, like a mimi zemi, it sounds like the sound. Mimi zemi, mimi zemi. So a lot of different species of 
leaf hopper suddenly in Southeast Asia, in tropical, semi-tropical areas. And of course, if you, you switch on light, small light trap or big light in tropical area, a lot of night moths like this one, like this Saturnide silk moths are coming to the light. In Australia, this entomology, these entomologists, but we are trying to look for some grasshopper, not only grasshoppers, but for some cockroaches, not for American cockroaches, but for Australian hissing cockroaches, which are digging, living underground. So that's why we're pretty strong. We are making nests underground, and it was quite hard to find them, to dig them, put them in the box, and they to keep them in hands because they very movable, they're moving very fast. They're trying to escape, but they're used like a pets and really very funny and living without winds underground, hiding like rodents in their hidden nests underground. And of course, in tropical areas, there are a lot of different brain mantises. Most famous were flower mantises, but this one has an adaptation to be invisible be ray like a stick, very similar shape, a similar adaptation to be like a stick insect, ray colored, like a dry pl plant, like a dry stem, and invisible for victims to make good and successful, not fishing, but praying for insects, and hunting for insects. So let's visit Ishigaki. In Ishigaki, entomologist collected some interesting grasshoppers like this one, quite a big one. So tropical area are very famous with large insects. Again, lovely stick insect. So soft, so big, so lazy, crawling very not so quickly because this is the adaptation of stick insects to be invisible, to survive without activities. If you are Moving too fast, maybe predator will understand that this is a food. If you are not moving, you are just movable. So maybe predator will decide that this is just a stick and not the food. Oh, lovely stick insects of a gray color, not a gray color, but green color. And uh, you can watch carefully about their structure, flattened structure with so prolonged antenna, so long, very long legs, pretty short wings and size. You can recognize so beautiful size, so lovely. And it looks like a piece of food for, for some animals, really. That's why they're so greenish. So they're greenish like a bright green leaves and they're becoming invisible in the jungle even just in the contrast with these flowers they're still looking like a piece of plant despite we know that this is a fuzz meat stick insect oh so greenish so lovely adaptation and it looks like some kind of green plant and this is another funny order the order of cockroaches blatoptera blatoptera as people say in tropical areas and in some areas of japan grasshoppers are so big yes some ordinary people are very surprised by cockroaches in japan they're big they're strange for entomologists the biodiversity of cockroaches in tropical areas, this is enjoyment. You can recognize two species in Australia was without wings, and this species with wings and quite a big size, probably very active, not like stick insects, which is moveless. This one is very active, moving very fast and flying very quickly. And what's about crickets? lovely crickets some crickets are predators 
with these strong mandibles. For instance, this species of cricket, Prosopoda, Prosopon green, very long Latin name. And very interesting yellow spot on a head, like a shining spot. This is not a Photoshop. This is a real shining spot on the head with open mandibles and adaptation to survive, to surprise the predator, to surprise if you found it. So this species is not trying to escape, but trying to surprise you. But this species is angry and dangerous. So the species open wings, first and second pair of wings, put legs in different sizes and making probably a little bit noise, noise by wings. So you can be very surprised and probably put it away. The same some animals, maybe some lizards or small birds will do the same, will be very surprised by this activity of this lovely cricket, you see. This is natural activity when this cricket just on the palm of entomologist. Of course, a lot of different beautiful butterflies in tropical areas. And when you're taking photographs, you don't need to kill them. You must be, you can be very careful about butterflies and other insects to keep them carefully between fingers. So that's why you can take a photo just from the down part of insect to enjoy this raphium, raphium genus with this name Papillonides. Butterfly and release it, release it. This is a common species in tropical areas of Japan and in semi-tropical areas as well. You can take a photo and release it. What's about dragonflies? Dragonflies are very famous in Japan. Tombow, tombow dragonflies are very famous. And also you don't need to kill it. You can keep it in between fingers carefully to take photo and release it. And you see in some areas like in Ishigaku, so beautiful. Ryokemis, Ryokemis genus is distributed with beautiful spots on the wings. Some tropical butterflies are big. Some tropical dragonflies are also quite a big, even giant, and especially they're spotted. This is also a case of a mimicry, adaptation to be invisible. This is like a spot of a darkness, like a shadow between transparent wings. So there looks like a pieces of leaves somewhere on near the water. So and dragonflies becoming invisible for predators. And some small butterfly, not this is a quite a big butterfly, dragonfly, also quite a very, very nice. And this one small, with also with spotted wings, some tropical dancer flies. We have a very narrow shape of body and size is pretty large, even up to more than five centimeters for this very narrow body. And let's visit some places, not in Southeast Asia, but in some South America. In South America, so this is Brazil, Ecuador, Peru, and other places. Venezuela, some Guyana, and what insects we can find there? Really unique insects. Yeah, I showed already. Dynastus beetles. So this photos have been taken in Ecuador by entomologists who are studying insects with light traps some years ago using different permissions for study, for taking photographs, for taking this light, collecting and light study. And observations have taken some photographs as well. So you see 
when you switch on light in the tropical area in semi-tropical area especially in south america a lot of insects are coming a lot of insects a lot of butterflies all orders not only butterflies not only beetles not only grasshoppers different orders of insects are coming and here if you carefully look for this photo which have been taken these photos have been taken in a dark time at night so you see big beetle on hand of entomologist big hercules beetle with huge horn sitting on hand and trying to escape she was either flying or just moving on foot just to the light and it was collected it was found near the light night time and entomologists were very happy to take photo of these insects yes these are beetles with two horns one big horn and smaller smaller one this is a male of hercules beetle hercules dynastus genus dynastus dynastus hercules and other species have been found as well yeah, dynastus neptunus dynastus satanus by the same group of entomologists who visited this place in ecuador and in peru so today we have recognized that many places many places in on off are very valuable for insects many places we have a rich biodiversity of insects especially tropical areas and semi-tropical areas and even on these light traps very small insects are coming coming in many tropical areas collecting of insects is under prohibition prohibited there are some permissions for collecting insects only for scientific purpose scientists can take investigation if we are coming from museums from one museum to another museum receiving permission for the investigation permission for collecting for taking some small samples of insects not collecting everything but collecting certain groups because many groups of insects under the protection and of course in tropical semi-tropical areas with high biodiversity of insects especially small group of insects which have not been studied before we have high biodiversity of species and new species for science can be found no this is not easy task this is not easy task because each group of insects needs special skills for finding different entomologists we have different techniques different methods for studying insects studying in the nature studying their biology natural environment how to collect how to find insects this is a special skills and i am talking about these skills methods of collecting methods of studying on this channel dr victor fursov entomologist beekeeper teacher so if you have not been on my channel before you can find my email and if you have some questions about methods of collecting you can send your question on my email if you have some troubles for collecting insects you do not know how to find certain group of insects ask me about it maybe we can suggest special technique how to find these insects because some insects are phytophagous some insects are predatory some insects entomophagous and for entomophagous insects like these tiny insects behind of me these are calcid wasps small hymenopterous insects with a size from 0.5 millimeter up to 5 millimeters it's quite difficult to find them it's possible to collect them using special scientific traps to take some samples from the natural environment for the study in the museum with permission entomologists scientists by coming to natural environment by coming to forest 
mountains, river, wood, river grasslands with permissions for scientific investigation. We are not doing it for fun. We are not doing it for just for collecting for fun. No, no, no. Entomologists are doing it for entomological purpose, for the study, for the study of biodiversity, for the study of biology. If you want to share your knowledge of your study, knowledge of your collecting, write in comments what you have collected in your area. And if you want to receive some piece of advice, write a, your question on this email. And if you want to be donator, support my channel, stand with Ukraine, you can drop your donation on different links which indicated under this video to join our group of our team of donators and to watch some closed videos on my channel which are open only for sponsors yes yes this is a small trick some interesting videos are closed only for sponsors and i will show some more interesting videos only for sponsors who support my channel to close area to close the group of only interested people who are interested in conservation who are interested not in collecting just for fun to catch everything and to sell it to sell it for trade for trade no 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 we are collecting insects for investigation for the study we are exchanging by insects for the study for scientific descriptions for publishing papers and you have you want to have some scientific publications together collaboration join me on my channel join me in the team of donators and ask my ask questions on this email and finally we were talking about costa rica yes costa rica is also the country with the law with law of protection law of conservation where insects under protection where it's prohibited to collect insects anyway in it, costa rica costa rica this is a country like a paradise of insects it's not possible to collect just with sweeping it without permission just for fun no no you can go to jail for a few months or you're going to receive some penalty which will, can be very costly for three thousand dollars yeah not a couple of dollars but three thousand dollars but the same can be if you visit some areas in australia if you can visit some places in kenya if you visit some places in indonesia you can receive quite a big penalty for collecting insects without permission you need to have scientific permission to come over there to study insects even to collect a little bit insects for scientific purpose but only with permission so that's why we can consider that some tropical areas with the law with protection with conservation of insects these areas these countries are the best for insects in the world at the present time but some other countries without any law without any conservation activities where everything is can be bought everything can be sold where corruption is press proliferating and flourishing where you can pay for everything these are countries are the worst for insects and these are countries actually the worst for human beings for population of this country not only for population of insects but for population of animals and for population of plants like forests as well and for population of insects these are worst countries countries without laws countries without democracy countries with some military activities which are trying to destroy other countries like we have now the situation in ukraine with situation with aggression against ukraine thank you for watching stand with ukraine support ukraine support entomology and looking forward to see you on my channel again with some questions with some 
comments if you are from ukraine if you are from america from australia from africa from europe from southeast asia you are welcome to my channel and write comments in your own language or use just translator and write your comments in english you are welcome to my another videos in english and see you soon on my channel to be continued good luck for friends of ukraine bye bye not too much communication not too much discussion but it's really obvious because entomology the science of insects is limited by the interest for only for certain group of people not everyone is interested in insects majority of people are afraid of insects so don't be afraid of insects welcome to my channel and you will not be afraid of insects when you know more about insects you know more about spiders about another arthropods you will love them you can be surprised but you will not be afraid of them thank you for coming best wishes for entomologists for biologists and for people who are with ukraine good luck see you soon on my channel bye bye and i am going off from my stream it will be recorded and write your comments ask your questions and subscribe to my channel on youtube using your mobile phone or using your computer when you are subscribed you have opportunity to receive notifications about new videos more videos will be coming to your line of your computer and to your telephone as well and you will not forget about interesting videos which i'm uploading weekly on my channel including some original videos of insects original discussions original streams not only alone but together with another interesting people our discussions are coming soon on this channel bye bye see you soon on my channel subscribe don't forget about it